In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thus says the Lord, You, Son of Man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt. But I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yours. To the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The Word of the Lord.
gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel readings for these first few weeks of the semester are difficult. Last week, Jesus told us that if we wish to be his disciples, we must deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Christian discipleship requires nothing short of a radical, complete surrender of oneself to Christ. This week, Christ entrusts us with being our brother's keeper. As disciples, we are obliged to help our neighbors turn away from sin, and the stakes are high. Just a few verses earlier, Christ uses a vivid analogy to describe the perils of sin. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it from you. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. This isn't a squishy, feel-good, Hallmark Channel Jesus. Jesus is trying to wake us up to the grave reality of sin and death, in contrast to which the salvation and forgiveness that he offers blaze like a cauterizing fire. These are serious thoughts for the beginning of a serious semester. Never in my life, I don't think, have the stakes of a shared community responsibility and care been so high. Failing to admonish our neighbors for dangerous neglect of community health standards could result in illness or even death. Failing to admonish our neighbors for racist speech or behavior could allow ripples of hurt and injustice to proliferate and magnify. In this gospel reading, Jesus shows us that God's salvific plan is not just a one-to-one -one transaction, as if personal faith in Jesus' atoning self-sacrifice were enough. Faith is essential and important, but it is only the beginning of a life lived in love. Jesus shows us that our actions and behaviors towards one another within the community have real implications, both in this life and the one beyond. Christ holds us responsible for the bodily and spiritual health of our sisters and brothers, but how are we to admonish one another if we see sin? Well, Jesus also tells us not to judge one another. Judge not that you be not judged. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but you do not notice the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. That's Matthew chapter 7. At first glance, these two commands, to refrain from judging, but to admonish one another for sin, seem contradictory, or at least somewhat in tension. St. Augustine suggests a way in which we might harmonize them. He writes, Our Lord warns us not to neglect one another's sins, not by seeking to find fault in our neighbor, but by looking out for what there is to amend. For the Lord is saying, that only the one who has no beam in his eye can see clearly enough to remove a speck out of his brother's eye. A speck in the eye is anger. A beam in the eye is hatred. So, in order that we may be able to do and to fulfill what we have been admonished of today, 
let us first persuade ourselves of this, that above all things we must have no hate. For when there is no beam in your own eye, you rightly see whatever may be in your neighbor's eye, and you are rightfully uneasy until you cast out of your neighbor's eye what you see is hurting it. Therefore, we ought to rebuke in love, not with any eager desire to injure, but with an earnest care to amend. Admonishing one's sisters and brothers only ever promotes spiritual health, both for the one being admonished and the one admonishing, when it is accomplished through love, and when it comes from a greater love of neighbor than love for one's own ego. The Gospel today says that if your neighbor sins against you, speak with him first in private. The point is not to shame or to denigrate one's neighbor, but to actually heal the wound of sin. This, then, is the true challenge Christ gives to us at this start of a challenging semester. To take up responsibility to and for one another in love. Perhaps we can feel safest doing this for our closest friends and family. Against the backdrop of a relationship of love, we trust that we can offer or receive admonishment without injury. We trust that the admonishment is trying to heal, not to hurt. But in the public square, accusations of wrongdoing all too often ring shrilly and noisily with hate. Too often we judge or condemn or belittle or dehumanize, or we simply stop listening and ignore them. As Christians, though, we are called to honor the dignity of each human being, not just our trusted family members or friends. We are called to care enough to help, to seek to heal each other's spiritual wounds, and to do this in a way that honors our neighbor's dignity. We must guard against hypocrisy, judgment, and hate. When we admonish one another in this way, we help each other as true sisters and brothers, true friends. As we begin this challenging semester, let us all renew our commitment to the gospel challenge of love of God and love of neighbor, that through God's love, our love of neighbor may be purified of hate and ego and may rise to meet the challenges we may face. As we pray together, let us remember Jesus' promise that where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. We are never left alone in the challenges we encounter. Christ is there with us, always ready to bring us into closer communion. Now let us offer together the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us praise the Lord, and give him thanks.